it does ring, I have to get it. It'll take me two seconds. So that's that. Secondly, you are here tonight and we are going to talk about what? We're going to talk about trading. We're gonna talk about trading this earning season, okay? It is earning season right now. Earning season officially started Wednesday of last week. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, now today was Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday, and we have some really, 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 really big earnings this week. Uh, and for those of you that are not aware of it, because you signed up for the webinar today, you are invited to come to the live trading room this week if you would like for an open house starting tomorrow. So you'll have the benefit of being able to come, see me live. I have no idea what we're gonna do tomorrow morning and I never know until I get up in the day. But it's a good time to come and watch. And again, you can trade if you want or you can just watch, all right? And if you'd like more information about that, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Kathy, you can put my information in the room, please. <clears throat> so we're gonna talk about how you can trade successfully this earning season, because right now is really all that we care about. Right now, what's happening today, tomorrow, how you can earn $1,000 a day trading. And everybody is always in this anxious mode where they're wanting to move forward with their trading, but don't know how. And we're gonna talk about that here tonight. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. I do answer the phone. Tiago, I see you in here. I think you've called me a few times. Uh, if it's the Tiago I'm thinking of. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype as well. And I appear on TV on pretty much every channel out there. Fox News, News Nation, CBS News. I talk about stocks. I talk about the market. I even talk about politics too, which is fun. But why are you here? Why are you here tonight? There might be one of several reasons or many reasons why you're here. You might be here because you're losing money trading. So ask yourself, why are you here? One, are you losing money trading? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, that could be why you're here. You gotta stop losing for one thing. Two, are you trading now but not making enough money? In other words, you are trading, you're actively trading, you are making money but you're not making enough. Not enough to pay the bills, do it as a career full time. Or maybe three, are you new to trading and don't know where to start? Don't have a clue what to do on any given day. Have no idea you're a beginner, never traded in your life. Or four, are you trading now and don't have a strategy that is consistent and you need one, okay? Because in order to be successful trading, you need a consistent strategy, one that makes you money pretty much every day that you trade, okay? I see some people coming in here late. <laughs> that's fine. If you have questions, you can write it in the room, okay? So what is it that you need to be successful as a trader? Well, you need, number one, a consistent strategy that works in any market condition, whether the market's up, down, or sideways, because you never know when the, what the market's going to do. Two, you also need a way to make the daily picks for what you're going to pick the trade pick each day. Three, you need a way to enter and exit the trade. How are you getting in? Where are you getting in? How are you getting out and where? Okay. Targets. And then four, you need good money management. This is a simple, simple, simple thing in my opinion, yet many, many people don't do it. All right, and we'll talk about these four things here today. So the first thing I said is a strategy. What do I use? I use my strategy and method to trade, which is called Golden Gaps. If you decided you wanted to come and learn my system from me, this is what you would learn. This is it. You're not going to learn this in the one hour tonight. You're going to learn, learn a little bit about what I do and why I do some of the things I do to see if you are maybe interested in doing my large class. And again, I'm offering the open house this week so you can come and see that point in fact I do know what I'm doing. Sometimes I put the live trading room videos on uh, YouTube, which you can go back and watch. I posted today's, but it's, it's very much different if you can come and be in the live room. This is what we did today. We did Zine. This was Zillow. So what do I do? I trade gaps. I coined my terminology. I came up with his name and called it Golden Gap because it is like finding gold in the market. 
because if you know where stock is going to go when it opens, from the second that it opens, to get the setup in it, you can make money, okay? It's a beautiful thing. So I'm not predicting the gap itself. I'm predicting where it's gonna go after I see the gap. So we shorted Zillow today. Now, first things first, what is a gap? Stock closed here the night before, which was Friday. Boom, open in the morning here. So the stock on Zillow closed roughly 95 and change. This was the 15th. <laughs> this is a daily chart, by the way. Then it opened here in the morning today on Monday, the 18th, right around here, snug as a bug, under 88-ish, 87 and change. We shorted it, we got in, got out, and we made money. It was a good trade. So again, for those of you that don't know what a short is either, a short is when you're betting, just look at my arrow here, that the stock price is going to drop. Okay, you can short stocks and you can go long stocks. If you think a stock is going to rise in price, if the price of the stock is $10 and you know it's gonna to go to 11, you can make money buying it at 10 and selling it at 11. Consequently, the same thing happens in the reverse where you can short stocks if you know the price is going to drop. If the price opens at 11 and it goes to 10, you can short it at 11 and get out at 10 and you make a buck. So in both scenarios there, you could have made a dollar times the share quantity of whatever quantity you take. If you take 1,000 shares, for example, and you make a buck, you could make $1,000. If you take 5,000 shares, for example, and he moves a buck, you'd make what? $5,000. But you can buy stocks and short stocks. For those of you that are new to me too, I love to short. And one of the reasons I love to short is because stocks that fall, fall faster, then they go up. It's just the way it is. And I like to be in and out of trades quick. And bearish moves, selling, drops, 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 moves can happen quickly fast and big, okay? So what else do you need to be successful? To make $1,000 a day or any money at all, even a dollar? You need a way to make the daily picks. How do I make the picks? How do I make the pick like Zillow? I rated it. So if you come and do my class, you will learn a rating system from me. This is the meat and potatoes of what I do. It's a 26 point checklist. I have it, I print it out, I go boom, 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 and I rate the stocks that I wanna rate and anything that rates 20 points or more, I take it. That's it. This is something that you can do. It's not something that's just out there. You're not buying a program where you're plugging it in and it's doing the work for you. You're gonna learn it, you do it, you go through the checklist, you total it up, boom. And in that sense, you have a direction then of what to do for the day. And I do all of this one in the pre-market in the morning. Again, if you come to the room this week, you'll see that. But the benefit is I'm not willy-nilly as soon as the market opens, 30 minutes, an hour into the day, not knowing what to do, trying to figure out what the market's wanting to do. And that's how many people trade. They're all over the place. I'm very black and white in the pre-market where I like this or I don't like this, or I like something today or I don't like anything today. And there are days we won't trade. Now, earning season is not one of those times. We're very busy in earning season and there's many things we can do on any given day but I usually prefer to stick with one thing, okay? Thank you, Kathy, and if anybody has any questions, you can always write it in the room, okay? So number three, what else do you need to be successful trading? Again, to earn $1,000 a day, a method and structure to enter and exit the picks. A method and structure to enter and exit the picks. So how are you going to enter it? Where are you going to enter it? What time frame? What time? and then the exit as well, okay? So these are things that are important, and I teach this in the class too. But if you come to the live trading room and you're in the live trading room, I call the entry and I also call the exit. And you'll see the pick as well, like we did Zillow today. But this is important. I find that too many people, even if they take a trade, even if they take a good trade, even if they're in a trade, and even if they're up money, they have no idea where they're getting out. That's the problem. Trades don't go on forever. Things that go up don't go up forever. Things that go down don't go on forever. The purpose of trading is to chunk it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. You have to trade to make money. You're going into the market and you're an active trader. If you decide you want to come and learn from me and you're taking the trade and you're getting out with profit, I do do options and I do active day trades, but either way, even the options that I do is chunking it out. Options, the way that I do them, are fast trades too, which are in one to two weeks. They are not trades that we do. 
where we're doing long-term investing where we're one year out or something like that. The idea of being an active trader is you are pulling money out of the market you know, every time you're in a trade and then you take another trade and then you get out with profit and you take another one, another one. I find that too many people, if they don't know where they're getting out, hold trades too long, even if they're up or even if they're down, quite frankly. And four, you also need good money management. Have your goals, your goals per day, your goals per week, your goals per month. Again, look at the bigger picture if that helps you. <laughs> I mean, you can take, you can train, you know, five days a week, or you could trade four days a week, whatever works for your schedule. If it does not work for your schedule to trade five days a week, then trade four days or three days or whatever days you can in between whatever you're doing right now for your job. Make it work for you the number of days that you could be there. Three is good, five is great. One is not enough. There's a guy, he works, he's a doctor, he's in the room two days a week. That's enough for him to make money. He comes in the two days that he's off. You know, you have to find a day to make it work for you and base your goals accordingly, which should be based on the size of your account and then you back it off. So goals should be based on a risk unit, okay, which should be based on account size and monetary weekly, monthly goals. So in other words, if your goal is $1,000 a day, and I'm just using this as a baseline here, you would need to risk approximately one amount of that for your risk. So if your goal is to make $1,000 a day, you'd have to risk $1,000 at least in a trade. If you have $2,500 in an account, you should not be risking $1,000 in the trade. You follow me? So it should, you have to look at your goals and you have to look at the amount that you have in the cash, okay? But you're looking for one-to-one. -one. And this is for day trades or options. So if you're taking an options trade and you're willing to risk $500, your goal is to make 500. Although sometimes I get out of my options trades at a return on investment of 50%. I still think that that's a good trade and profit. But your goal is 100% return investment in options and your goal is one to one in day trades, okay? And again, it should be based on the size of your account. Now, what if you decide you wanna come learn from me? What will you learn in my Golden Gut course? You'll learn all these things I just discussed in detail in detail and more because I talk a lot about the brain in the class. I talk a lot about wealth manifestation. I talk a lot about a lot of things that you need. I see Galahad just signed in here. Galahad is an old student. Galahad knows that I talk about these extra things and they help and you need them. You need them to be successful. You know, we're in a time and a day and a place right now in 2021 and I don't care where you live in the world, whether you live in the United States or someplace else, especially in this times of the economy and the post COVID or People are still in COVID. My God, look at Australia. The inflation, all the things we're talking about, you have to have a positive attitude. It will serve you best. It will not serve you to have a negative attitude. And unfortunately, a lot of traders do have negative attitudes. Why? They have negative attitudes because when they started trading, the moment that they started trading, they lost money or took a class and didn't make money and learned something there that didn't make them money. The fact is you cannot have a negative attitude or you won't do well. You have to have a positive attitude. It does not mean that every day will be fabulous. Some days I have a bad day. Some days you will have bad days. That's part of life. What makes a difference with someone with a positive attitude and a, and a positive outlook about trading and money and life and someone that has a negative one is that the positive person will overcome the negativity or a bad day much faster and much easier and much stronger than someone that has a negative attitude that actually will probably end up continuing down, down, down. You ever hear that spiraling down when one bad thing happens and then a hundred bad things happen? You've heard of it. So anyways, you learn a lot of those things in my class besides the method and the strategy, which again is the meat and potatoes. So the Golden Gap course teaches you how to find, pick, and play the best bearish gap daily and the entries and exits, which of course you need, okay? Any questions from anybody, write it in the room. Again, I'm seeing people sign in late. We had to start on time here. <coughs> Very good. So when do I trade? Between 9.30 and 10. You wanna to come to the open house this week, you gotta be there. I'd say no later than 9.15 at the latest. This is Eastern time zone. I make money fast, I'm in and out quick. We do not trade all day, okay? So if you have a passion or an interest for trading, you can do this from home, which is a nice thing. Many people are still working from home. Some people are actually gonna be permanently from home. <coughs> I was talking to an old client who's coming back to the room. He's permanently from home now. And he works for a big corporation, like he's never going back. 
So you may have the flexibility now to trade part-time and still do your job, which you could never do before. So that's a nice thing too. So it's a way to make extra money. Trading has a limited income potential. I'm, the title of the webinar is Earn $1,000 a Day, but really it's the idea that you can make a living doing this. You can obviously earn way more than that. And there are people that are trading with me that are. It depends on the size of your account. And again, I can answer specific questions to that if anybody has them. It's about your risk. But you cannot risk a lot of money in a trade if you don't know what to do, because you'll lose it. But I really don't think people should risk any money in trades and they don't know what to do. So if you're ready to start making some changes in your trading and your life, this may be while you're here. You can make money in the market. People do it all the time. However, not everybody does. Why? For the reasons I talked about earlier. People are all over the place with what they're doing. They don't have a specific strategy. They don't have really the skill set to do it accurately. They're piggy targets, everything they're greedy when they take their trades, they miss and oversize themselves in trades, takes too much risk based on the size of their account and don't know what they're doing or have any pre-planned action before the market opens. So of course they're all over the place. And many people have the news on, they have CNBC on our Fox business and they see what they're talking about. You know, I don't really take trades based on news. Now I could get a gap and the gap may be about news. We did the Zillow today. That was not an earnings gap. That was not a market gap. <laughs> that was a news gap, okay? But I don't do them all the time, all right? And still and even still, I saw it before the open. So if you're one of these people that have been following me for a long time, you've been attempting to trade and you haven't gotten anywhere with it, don't let the past hold you back. You've got to move forward. I'm telling you, it is all in your attitude. While you cannot be successful, even if you have a great attitude, even if you don't have a strategy, by golly, you will find someone and be led to someone that knows what they're doing and how to trade and has a good strategy if you have an optimistic and positive attitude about that. I always say that the people that are meant to fi that find me are meant to find me because there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people on YouTube and out there in the world and even through Online Trader Central that are talking all the time about their programs and education. And the people that come to me and spend the money and take the time to do my class and learn from me really, I feel like are meant to find me. But you know, in today's day and age, I think it is easy for people to get bogged down in the doom and gloom about what's happening in the world because there's so much of it. There's so much crap out there. In fact, I was saying this in the trading room the other day. I, I've gotten back to watching on TV old sitcoms, reruns of shows that I have not seen for 25 years because I want to laugh, because I want to go to bed at night happy, and at the end of the day, you work, you're doing this, this, this. I want to de-stress at the end of the day. I don't want to watch news at the end of the day. I don't want to watch crazy stuff or people screaming on TV. I want to watch fun stuff. There's so much heavy stuff going on in the world. You know, I want to be uplifted and feel good at night and laugh. There's just not enough of that anymore. Even with the writing, even with the scripted scripted shows that we're seeing on TV and the new programs. I find that so much of them are, are downers. And again, any questions feel like you can plop them in the room. But if you've had obstacles in the past, you need to know that you've got to overcome them to get ahead. The positive thing about the times we're living in is that again, like I said, many people are having a lot more flexible job schedules than they ever did before and that's good it's good and if you're one of those people that's positive then maybe you can do this and make the time to do it another positive thing for people right now is that a lot of people have gotten a lot of them stimulus money people have gotten stimulus money they're getting the child extra the child care money in the u.s the extra 300 dollars a child many people are getting stimulus money money that they never expected and they can use that to fund a trading account and that's important too. So you getting extra money helps, okay? But in order to become successful, you have to be serious. And that does mean learning from someone and taking direction. I think it's easier for people to take direction from me because I'm a female. Maybe they'd find it harder that I, if I was a man. I think that I'm very relatable. I answer questions from people, but I am very direct um, when I'm saying something or talking. And you'll see that if you come in the room this week or if you've ever been in the room. But, you know, you have to kind of take a step back and say, wait a minute, I'm going to say this person knows what she's talking about. I'm going to listen. I'm going to think about what she has to say. I said something in the room the other day to somebody that actually did the class over the summer. And he said, 
<laughs> I don't even know what I said. It was something about the market. And he said, keep drilling it into my head or something like that. This is somebody that did my class and is training in the room, but he's he had learned something that was completely different from what I did for 20 years he was trading. You know, when you get in a habit of doing something or looking at charts in a certain way and it's wrong, it can be drilled into your head even if it's wrong. And it takes time. It takes time to undo those things sometimes, the bad habits or the misinformation. And so even though learning from someone may cost you money up front, in other words, there's a fee to take my class, it saves you money in the end because you'll learn how to focus and trade smart. And again, the benefit of being in the live daily trading room is that I'm giving the picks in the morning in the room, okay? So we did Facebook on, what day was this? Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday? What was last week? No, this was Friday. No, this was, we did it, we did do this Friday. We did this Friday and the 12th, yeah. Let's go over Facebook, here's the chart. We did this trade here on the 12th, and we also did it Friday too. So we did it twice. This was, we did it twice last week, I didn't realize that till now. This was uh, Tuesday, and we also did it on the 15th, which was Friday. Yeah, we did it. This is the trade, we're gonna go over the trade from, from uh, Tuesday. I don't have Fridays in here, but we did it Friday too. We've done a couple options in this and day trades as well. So here was the trade from the last week on the 12th, which was Tuesday. Now I'm gonna go over two, two sizing examples here for you. So you can get a feel for advanced and beginner. Now I'm an advanced trader, I consider the risk that I risk advance, why? It's more than $1,500 a trade and Again, I've been doing this now for 13 years. So you by all means do not have to risk an advanced risk. I am gonna go over a risk of approximately $1,000 in these trades. And I'm doing that because that is what we're talking about today. If you want to earn $1,000 per day, then you have to risk at least 1,000. Follow me? I don't know what day of the week it is, Kathy. I was working yesterday on a Sunday. <laughs> And between my TV schedule lately, webinars and trading, you know, I just get up and I open up my charts and look at the date. <laughs> Anyways, here was the entry. For this day, we did it here on the 12th. Let's get back to Sirius, Tuesday. Entry was 321.90, shares 1,200, risk was 2,880. We did an ad and it was lower than the price, so we pulled our price down a little bit. We pulled the price down to 321.60. Sometimes I will do this. I did do this here, okay? Total shares 2,400. We exited at 318.20. This is a great trade. Why? Good entry, 321.90. Good size, 2,400. Got the move, good move down, got the drop. Profit was $8,160. Again, let me go back to the bigger chart here. You can see this a little bit better in this one here. What happened on this day? Shot gap down. Closed here, gap down fell. Now I know this closed with a tally thing and a green bar, but we shorted it. We shorted this trade, we got the drop, boom, we got out. We had a beautiful trade in this and it was a short. It was a gap down that dropped and fell and we shorted it. We had a beautiful exit, uh, entry and exit in this. So again, this was Tuesday. We did do this Friday too. I, I don't have this trade in here. So this was a gap down I saw in the morning and we did it. Now, if you think this is too expensive, you can do what? 500 shares, 500 shares, add a thousand shares. So risking $1,200, you could have made 3,700. That could be your whole week. Again, if you don't have time to trade every day, you come in one or two days a week. This could have been your whole goal for your whole week. Last week on Tuesday, you could have made your week in this trade. And that is really sometimes all it takes when we get the big moves. This was not an earnings trade. I don't know when Facebook earnings are, I have to look it up, but it was a nice sell off. It was a beautiful move. Now, what if you don't even want to do 500 shares? What if you say, I still think this is expensive, Melissa, because it's a day trade, it's on margin. Guess what? You can buy a put. A put is an option straight. You could have bought, for example, the 320 puts or something like that. 
and you can still get in and get out. I don't know what they would have cost here on this particular second in the moment we did this, but you could have done that if you were in the room and you wanted to have a train which you would take that you wouldn't have margin necessarily required to take it. Follow me? So you can use my method for options if you prefer. I like to do both. Any questions about Facebook? I didn't realize we did that twice last week. And again, I'm seeing some people come in late. We ready started. If you have questions, you can write it in the room. Oh, that was a whistleblower day. The 12th was a whistleblower day. You know what's so funny? I talk on, I, I, you know, on on news channels. That feel with the 24 hour news cycle. That feels like that was a month ago. I kid you not. That was not even a week ago. That whistleblower story with Facebook. It feels like it was a year ago. <laughs> and with all the stuff that happened, just even today, isn't that so fun? I mean, this is the world that we live in. It's so fast. It's fast. You don't even have time to think. But I do think when in the morning, before I'm in any trades, when I have time, when I'm situated, when I get up and I get up early and I'm drinking my coffee and I'm making breakfast and I can think and I don't have the noise and the fast and the speed of the market. Do you know what I'm saying? When you're in trades and you're already in and you're engaged, you have positions on, you have money at risk, you're like, Too. you knowing what to do ahead of time, planning it out, getting it situated, that you like it, the direction, the targets, all of that stuff, you know, it really makes a huge difference. The more work I do in the pre-market, the prep work, the shorter and the faster I'm in and out of trade, the better I do, the more money I make. So all that work I do in the morning helps me do well in the day. And then I don't have to spend a lot of time lollygagging around. You know? Anyways, this was a good trade even with 500 shares, whether you add it or not. Now, I was talking about options. Oh, this is the wrong chart here. This is not the chart of the cues. Let me pull up the cues. That looks like a Facebook chart. I'm going to take this off for one second. We did a cues option. At the wrong chart in there. Can everybody see this is a chart of the market? The QQQs, ETF. Big rally today in the market. Can everybody see it? Hello. So I'm going to go back two weeks now. End of September, we closed here. Gap down, fell. Again, the red bar means what? Selling. Fell, fell, fell hard here. October 1st, which was a Friday. The 4th was a Monday. Fell all the way down low was 350.32. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint here just because I had the wrong slide in. That Monday that we had just showed you that fell off a cliff, I called a put in the morning. Set in 9, 30, 23 a.m. Strike was 357. I just showed you we dropped down to 350 and change. Expiration date was the Friday, but we got in and out of it that day. It was a put. A put is a short, okay? Beginner risk is what? $3.80, three contracts. Risk was $1,140. Sold at $7.60, 100% return on investment, in and out that day. You could have made whatever amount you wanted to risk that day, 100%. It dropped so big so fast. I'm going to go back to the chart and show you in a minute because I didn't have that upright. But anyways, this is a trade from an options newsletter service that I offer. You do not have to do the class to sign up for this newsletter service. It is an annual subscription, but this is a cheaper way to take trades than having an equity account if you feel so inclined. If you do not want to have a margin account, why? Because you could have bought one contract and just paid, what, $3.80. The fact that the cues were worth $357 a share, whatever they were at the open, is meaningless to you because you're only paying the cost of the contract. That's the benefit of options. Now let's go back again. You see where the timestamp where I sent it out. This was the day we sold off like a hot cake. Right there. So here we closed, opened, dropped, got the sell off. 
We open around 358.52. If you took the train the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the day, you got in, didn't even matter. Dropped like a rock. In fact, I'm going to show you here the 15 minute. It's 10 4. Closed here. We gapped down, I rated it in the pre-market, sent the trade out before the open for the options newsletter people. Boom. Here's a sell-off. Drop. See it? This is a 15-minute chart. So you can see really how we open and just went straight down. Again, we're doing gaps. That was a gap. That was a gap down which you could have shortened as a day trade or done as a put. Any questions here so far? It's a couple of testimonials from students, Jackie and Zen Trader. Both of these clients have been with, with me for a long time. In fact, I think both of these people have been in the room with me and on the options letter for more than five years. I think that speaks a lot to actually the quality of my program because these people did the class and they can trade on their own and they're still with me because I, I make good calls. But they're making more money than it costs to be in the room and on the letter, so they're st they stayed with me. Does anyone have any questions about anything we've talked about so far, so far today? Again, I saw a bunch of people sign in late, so I don't know where people came in, but we're talking about gaps, we're talking about trading, we're talking about earning season, we're talking about doing fast trades, and basically, we're talking about the idea of following a system and having a system and sticking on that one system. Success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. I talk to people all the time and they go on and on about different stocks and trades. And, and I talked about this in the email today where I said, you know, people want to trade the same stock every day. That's crazy. You're not going to make money over the course of a year if you do that. Even if something's in an uptrend, you can't buy it every day. Even if something's in a downtrend, you can't short it every day. I do something different every day. It's funny though that I happened to notice that Facebook we did do twice last week. I really love that. But you know, that's rare. In general, we're doing different stocks most every single solitary day because my system is pinpointing a different stock every day. So we rotate because we're trying to get the biggest move, the momentum. Again, the momentum to the downside and the upside, but I prefer shorting. And one of the reasons that I prefer shorting is because I'm really good at it. So I have a niche and by having a niche, actually it's helped me to become more and more successful by pinpointing down the very, very specific detailed things that I'm looking for in say a gap and a short and the move. Most day traders, and I don't know why this is, I will never know, but most day traders for some reason do prefer to go long. And I, I'm saying day traders, retail traders of any kind, swing traders, options traders, day traders, People prefer to go long. I guess the concept of buying low and selling high, buying dips, whatever, it's easy for people to grasp, understand. I have no idea, but people love to do that. In general though, I found that focusing on shorts, the downside has really become a niche for me. When I started out trading, I didn't know anything about shorting or anything at all. I taught myself my own method, but I made the most money I ever made one day when I shorted. And it wasn't a gap. And I said, that's it. And, I, and then I never looked back. And I realized over the years, when I was trading alone, then I made friends, then I started the business, how so few people uh, know how to short well, and even more so, how many, many people don't understand how to short and they prefer to go long. So you will have a niche if you learn how to short because many people don't know how to do it well. So that's another reason to come to me too, but I mean, I just don't, I don't get why people prefer to go long. I'm not in that camp. I'll make money going long, I will. I absolutely will, we went long NVIDIA last week. I could have gone long NVIDIA today, I did not. But anyways, we went long NVIDIA last week and, and, and it's just like, I'll go long and I'll go short, but I always go to the short side first. I love the short side and I love the fast train. Uh, Sari is asking the stats going back a couple of years. Sari, Sari, you have been following me forever. You've been following me for at least five years. You might even be following me for longer. Somebody emailed me the other day and I, and I said, this person, I've talked to this person before. Do you know when the person emailed me? 2013. The person was following me for eight years. Sheree's asking a question right now. Sheree, 
you have gotten every single email I've ever sent to go back and look at those stats as long as you want. <laughs> You've gotten every email. You've been following me forever. You people are so funny. In fact, I emailed that guy. I emailed that guy this morning. I said, do you know how long you've been following me? Eight years. You know, it's so funny. Like, my assistant just bought a car, and he's talking about it with me. And it, it it didn't take him long to figure out that he wanted to buy a car or buy it. He ended up buying a used car, but it was an expensive one. But it didn't take him long to make up his mind. And I'm, I'm the same way. If I want something, I buy it. And it doesn't take me long to make up my mind. And I don't know why. People have, have but there are people that are following me for a long, long time. I have no idea. I can only uh, surmise, based on that, that people did not want to pay the price of my class at that time and decided to pay for other classes that were cheaper, ended up losing money in the market, ended up losing money, and then come back around to me anyways. I don't know why people do that. You are going to get what you pay for. There are certain designers, I don't want to say, because I'm taping this and putting it on YouTube, but there are certain designers out there that I will not buy their clothes. I know that you wash them once or twice, they do not last. I shouldn't even call them designers. I should say brands, brands. There are certain brands of clothing I will not buy, or shoes. I wore this one shoe that I got because it looked cool and I liked the color. I, oh my God, I, I, I had a, got a big blister on my toe. I basically just should have just trash the stupid things. You get what you pay for. That's true in anything, in any product that you have. Sari, you have every email from me and I'm gonna email you afterwards and tell you how long you've been following me <laughs> because I'd like to know, but I know it's a long time. Some of you are gonna follow me until I get married to you know some very successful man in New York and, and have babies and then don't have time to trade or run a business. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Galahad will be like, I knew it. I knew you'd get married and have babies. <laughs> what about the short side? What do you mean I've given into the short side? I just, I just like it. All right, we got off topic here about babies and all this other stuff. But the reality is that Training success and financial success in the market is by pure design. It is not by accident. It's not, okay? And again, the pre-work that I do in the morning is important. And again, if you come to the open house this week, you'll see that. So how can you become successful day trading? If you want to trade like everyone else out there, then your results will be like everyone else. And unfortunately, to be honest with you, many people do not make money in the market that actively trade. Because the odds are stacked against you, it doesn't mean you can't do it. <laughs> in fact, if anything else, that should make you more determined to, to do it. Knowing that there's so few people successful that if you could become one of those few people, then you'd be able to make a lot of money. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a pyramid where you have the, the people at the top that make gobs and gobs of money, and then you have a couple of people still at the top that make more. I mean, a less than the people at the top, but still a lot, and then so on down. And then you have the people at the bottom. You can't be those people at the bottom. Know that you deserve something different and you want something different for yourself. These free chat rooms that are out there, I know everybody loves them. These Reddit chat rooms and everything else, most people in those chat rooms are losing. And that is what I mean. When you go into these chat rooms and take ideas to trade and risk your money from complete strangers, what do you expect? How can you expect to have good results? You have to be serious about it. Again, what I said before, you get what you pay for. You need to grab hold of what works and learn from a trader who has a special talent for reading the market. Learn a methodology and a system that is unique. I have a unique method and strategy that I trained, which I alone created. So my method is based on reading institutional money that moves stocks in gaps. It is called the Golden Gap Rating System. It is a 26-point checklist. This tells me what I should trade every day and in what direction. Today we did the Zillow. I also did like Boeing today, BA, you can look that up too. Uh, that was a top watch this morning as well. Again, I don't know what we're gonna get the rest of the week, I never know till I get up in the morning, but I'm looking for the institutional footprints of money that come into a stock that either buy it or sell it or short it. And then I'm looking for a rating of 20 or more. I don't have to have a perfect score of 26. 20 or more is a cutoff for me. And 20 is a lot of things. Again, I'm a perfectionist. I'd like to look for detail, detail, detail that hones it down. Because in my mind, I only need one good trade a day in order to make money. But the whole niche of the system is to find the gap that's going to have the big move and find the large money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. 
The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing, and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. And that's important. The 26-point rating system, again, that is my system. That is what you come and learn from me. That is what you are learning, and it's all on the daily chart, and it pinpoints the direction of the footprints of institutional money and gaps. So therefore, I know, should I go long the stock today, or should I short this stock today, or should I do nothing, because it's really not going to move at all? <coughs> again, I don't know till I rate it. That's the work that I'm doing. It's the work that I'm doing in the room. And if you take the class and learn it, you should do the work too. Even if you're in the room, you should still do the work so you know that you're getting the right direction and the right ratings. So by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. It's one of the reasons why earnings season is a profitable time to trade with me because you get a lot of gaps. For whatever reason, stocks tend to gap on earnings. Again, I don't know if they're gonna gap up or down, but the fact is you get a lot of gaps in earnings season, which is all this month and all the month of November into before, right before the holidays. Trading golden gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading the side of power and money. And even though we're talking about earning only $1,000 a day, you can earn way more if you get a great gap move. Some of the things we do, again, even things that are, I'd say even under $50 a share, can have $2, $3 moves. So I looked at Boeing this morning, but we did do this last week too. Here's the daily of Boeing. Let's take a look at it. So I'm gonna go back here, close to your gap down, fell, close to your gap down, fell. Again, this was the beginning of October. Now, I do think this has earnings, I want to say next week. I think it's like the 28th or 29th or something. I want to say it's the 28th. We'll be watching this for next week. I'm going to go over just what I did before. An advanced trader risk and a beginner trader risk. Okay? A risk with a thousand, so you understand it. We did it this day here on the 14th, which was Thursday. The entry was 218.20. Stop was 219.85. Shares was 2,500, risk was 2,750, ad was 218.40, average price was 218.30. I did the exact same thing as I did with the other trade. Remember I showed you the ad from the other one? Piled it on. 5,000 shares. I exited this early. This kept going. This kept going. I could have held this longer. I was on TV on Thursday. I wanted to get out quick, but I could have held on. 217.70 is where I got out. Boom. Profit 3,000. Now, I'm going to go back to the daily here. This is a, oh, no, shoot. Do I have this up? Can you, I don't know if you can see this here. You can see where the bar went all the way down. You can see that it went past uh, where I got out of it. I know this is really small, but I don't know if you can see it. That was a short. Oh, here, you can, you can see it here. And it was a sell-off. Now, beginner risk was what? 1100 with the ad 2000 total shares you could have made 1200 again this is a fast quick exit this was nowhere near the low of the day we got out of this quick and early i had things to do that day and sometimes i will get out in five minutes ten minutes you it's never over to the fat lady sings so you're in a trading you're out when you're up so you know if i get close to my goal for the day i usually take it unless i feel like we have the market with us or it's a power trend day or something like that but I think it's important to book money in the morning and as early as you can. You have economic data in the afternoon, Fed minutes, all kinds of stuff that can affect your trades. Sometimes it can affect your trades positively, but sometimes it can affect your trades negatively. And you've got to book money as fast as you can. Remember, in, out, in, out. You're chunking it out. This is the wrong chart again. I'm, my assistant has this Facebook chart in here. This is not a chart on the trick cues. But we did another option in the cues. I'll go back and pull up the cues again. This was back in September. Friday the 24th, QQQ, strike was 370. This expired on the 1st of October. This was a put in the market. Again, a short. Let's go back and look Friday 924. So we did this trade here. Again, I'll go back to it in a second. 
The tray was down. I stayed in it. It rallied into close. The trade was down. We were short. The market rallied. It was 924. We were in the trade. It was Friday. Boom. Got up Monday morning. Fell. Boom. Again, that is something that I'm very, very good at doing. We were short. We were in a trade. Trade was down. Then it crashed. Went in our direction. Great trade. Again, you'll learn all of this stuff in the class, but... I'm showing you days that we did the trades and the direction. So we did the 370s. Advanced trader risk, 320 was, you could do one, pay 320 bucks. 25 contracts is an advanced risk of 8,000, sold at 1030, $17,750, just in a couple of days. Again, you would have had to stay in that trade over the weekend, but you should never risk more than you can afford to lose because not every trade goes the same day I call it. At an option anyways. 222% return on investment. This was a nice read of the market. Again, this was a couple weeks ago, but I'm showing you this because it was tricky because the trade was down first before it went. If you wanted to take in a $1,000 risk approximately, again, this is not an exact science, 960. You could have taken four and went over. $2,130 profit with three contracts, three. You could have taken one. You could have taken two. You could have taken more than 25. Okay. So again, if you prefer to do options, you can use my method for options. The newsletter though, where you get these trades, like I sent this out right, right into the open, happens via email. The live trading room, you have to be there live. This is a testimonial from Dan. Any questions from anyone about anything? The most important thing is knowing what to do. When you know what to do, you can trade all the size you want after the fact. And then it's getting comfortable with your size. If you notice you're not comfortable with it, you're probably risking too much. I'm in a very comfortable position with my sizing right now. I probably could increase my sizing, but I'm in such a groove with what I'm doing. Plus, I'm running the room live in the morning. I don't know if I want to increase it, but I'm thinking about it starting 2022. You know, you get to these points and you say, you know, am I ready to take it to the next level? Everything that you do involves risk for everyone. It's the same. You cannot make money in the market without taking risk. If you think that you can, you're nuts. For these people out there that think you can take $500 and make 100 grand in 30 days, I've heard people say them in these webinars I do, that is so, so crazy. If I traded perfect every day, I couldn't do that in a month. That's nuts. Think realistically. If you have $500, you can make $500 in one trade. Or if you risk $500, you can make $500 in one trade. If you risk $1,000, you can make $1,000 in one trade. That's normal. And in order to risk $500 in one trade and make $500, you're going to need more than $500 in your account. If you're an options account, the minimum you need is $2,000. And I would not risk $500 in a trade if it's 25% of your account if you have only two grand. I mean, if you had five grand in your options account, you could risk $500. And you're going to need at least... 2500 or preferably 5000 to open up a prop account to trade on margin. And if you want to go retail, you're going to need 25000 to trade margin. Options is a cheaper way to do it. So I'm showing you options trades. But either way, you always have to have a cushion. Ron is asking, do I have trades that don't go well? Now, that's a silly question. I have trades that lose? Of course I do. Why would I market every single loss I've had for the last 12 months in a webinar? That is silly, silly, silly. I'll tell you right now a trade that I lost in last week. Here, let me pull it up. I'll tell you right now. Find it here. I lost last week in... The spies, the 438s. Let me show you the chart. Call this on the 11th. This is an options newsletter trade. No, wait, no, that wasn't 
the 11th. I called it the week before. I called this on the 10-4. 10-4 I lost in. Here. 10-4 was here. Ron's asking me about a trade I lost in. It was one that expired on the 15th, but I lost in it between here and the 15th. I'm just gonna show you this chart. 10-4 was here. I did the 425 puts. Here's the 15th. We closed at 446. So theoretically, theoretically, you could have gotten in and out of this here, but I didn't. Some people might have. Sometimes I'm up a little bit in a trade and I don't get out. <laughs> but do you see what it did in that two weeks period? It rallied. So I lost in a market put. Do I use a stop to limit risk? I use stops for my day trades. I do not use stops for my options. Why? Because, getting back to the slide here, this is my stop. That's it. If I risk $8,000 in a trade, I can't lose any more than that. So I don't kill trades in the middle of them. Here's another example. Again, I don't have this in the webinar. I did calls in NVIDIA. I don't have this in, but I'll tell you what I did with this. I bought calls here the 7th. They were up a little bit. Again, similar to the market, I didn't get out. Some people might have gotten out, but I didn't. They weren't even up 50%, so I didn't get out. This fell, fell. I'm down in the trade, down in the trade, down in the trade. This trade expired the 15th. The trade was positive the 14th. I got out. You could have stayed in it to the last day and been positive. But again, here's another example. This trade went, and if I killed it with a loss, I would have lost. Instead, I made money, so I don't have a stop in options. There are people that take stops in options where they kill the trade, at a 50% loss, but they miss out on trades like NVIDIA, they did not get the profit in the NVIDIA. But then they may save money where I will lose full in trades and they will not. I have found though, and this is just my personal experience, that I'm better off holding win or lose. NVIDIA is a great example of that, quite frankly. Day trading rule applies on options, not if you open up a cash account. If you have a margin account, you have, have to go with the rules for margin accounts. You can open up an options account as a cash account. You need to talk to your broker about that. Day trading rules then do not apply. Call your broker, ask them the questions, but you absolutely can trade options with less than 25,000. And if you don't want to be restricted, you have to have the account type set up as cash. Make sense? Anyways, let's address Ron's question before I get back to the webinar here. Um, anything that you do, you have to assess your risk. Why? Because if you are following along with me, you will have trades that lose. I would love it that every trade that I worked was positive. That's not the case. In any system that you do, you're looking for a high win ratio. Nothing is 100%, but that's why I go through the process of rating the gap every single morning, because I'm looking for high odds. So when I'm rating it, I'm saying this rates 20 points or more. I'm saying the odds are in my favor. This is trade is going to be a winner. If it rates under 20 points, the odds are not in my favor that it's not going to be a winner. Does that make sense? So at the end of the day, you're going through things and you're looking at stuff and you're trying to find what has high odds of working. If you have more winners than losers and your trades are sized monetarily with a consistent risk, you're going to win. 
if your train sizing is all over the place, you're going to lose even if you have a high win ratio system. So you got to have both. You can't be risking $5,000 in one trade and $2,000 in another trade because what if the $2,000 trade wins and the $5,000 risk trade loses? Then you can have a 50% win ratio and you could still be down money and down a lot. So your risk has to be the same, which we talked about earlier. That was one of the key points at the beginning. Plus, you have to have a system that has more winners than losers. I absolutely do have losers. I don't market my losers. And to be honest with you, I don't like to think about them. I really don't live in the past of past trades that I had or losses. If I was that point, I would never be where I am today. I would have never been able to figure out my system. I lost when I first started trading. I lost a lot of money in the three years I figured out my system. If I would have thought about it and kept going over it and over it and over it, I would never be where I am today. No one should hold on to losses. Let it go. Move forward. Understand that when you take a loss, if you have a good system, the next trade is probably going to work. That's your attitude and that should be your attitude. But that's why you can't risk more than you lose. That's why you can't risk your whole account in one trade. That's why I just said, if you have $2,000 in an account, you shouldn't be risking $1,000 in one trade because that's half your account. Makes sense? You must look at this realistically. And if you honestly think that you can find a system out there that never loses, you're not looking at this very realistically. And I find that people, again, are always trying to like default to trying to make all the money that they ever lost for as many years as they've ever traded back in one big trade or one good trade or one week or one month. That's not going to happen. It's like my class. We didn't get to the end here, and I know we've really got off tar target here, but these were some good questions. So I hope you can let me go a little bit later, Kathy. My class is $7,000. You should not be rushing to try to make $7,000 in one day or one trade or one week. The idea of which to cover the cost of the class, basically, after the fact. The idea is to learn something that you can use for the rest of your life. If you can make it in one trade, great. A lot of people do. If you can make it in one week of trading with you, great. A lot of people do. If it takes you a month, if it takes you six months, depending on your risk, that's what it is. You have to look at this in the long term, not the short term. It's like if you go and you decide that you're going to do something like start a new career or learn, it, learn something new or change jobs. You have to look at it in the long haul. If you're very short-sighted with this, you will not do well. I think that is also one of the reasons why most people lose in the market. They are too short-sighted in this. When I started trading, I wouldn't say that I was short-sighted because I really wanted to do it for a career and I wanted to find something new to do. I didn't like my mortgage job anymore. It was changing. It was 2007. I wanted to get out. And, and I wanted to get out and then I started trading in 2008. But I was short-sighted in the sense that I thought I could figure this out in six months. I thought six months was enough time. I knew I was intelligent. I knew I was smart. I thought I could figure it out in six months. I was wrong. So in that sense, I should have given myself a longer window to, to figure things out initially, but I did not. And when I look back on the money that I started out with and the period of time it took me to figure out my system to trade, which I taught myself by trading real life money and losing it and going back and looking at things. And I didn't start out with 26 points again. You know, this was a developed process of three years, but I lost more than half the money that I lost over the course of the period figuring out my system in like the first three months, literally, literally. So like if I had just given myself more time to figure it out, I would have been a lot better off, a lot less stressed. Do you know what I mean? So it's just, people don't look at it in the bigger picture and you really, really need to do that. And it's similar to even if deciding to, again, pay for the class. Look at it in the bigger picture. I only accept credit cards for the class. Put it on a credit card. Give yourself time to pay it off. Pay the minimum payments, the monthly payments, and focus on trading and learning it. That's the best way for you to go about it. It's, you have to look at it in the bigger picture. It does not have to take you forever to learn it, but it might take you longer than you think to get where you want to be. I don't know why that is, but I find that human beings in general are impatient, and I'm in that camp. I just explained to you how I was impatient before. You've got to be a little bit more patient. Only high probability trades is good, too. It's like, um, let me give you an example of something. I have a uh, very nice furniture and I sometimes get stains on the furniture. I've learned from experience. I don't do this anymore, but in the past I would be impatient and then try to get the stain off my furniture myself 
freaking out. It's a stain. It's a stain. And then you know what? When I've done that in the past, I've always regretted it. It's made the situation worse. I don't do that anymore. I'm patient. I call the place, the cleaning place. They come, they pick up the furniture, or they clean it here in the apartment, and it's all good. It, sometimes when you have a stain, if you try to, to handle it yourself, even on dry cleaning, clothing or whatever, you make it worse. You don't touch it. You just don't touch it. You're patient. You say, got to call, got to pay, got to have them come, and they fix it clean it all up, put the stuff on. You have to be patient sometimes if you want things to be perfect. I'm a perfectionist by nature. If, if you opened up my uh, cabinets in my bathroom, all of my nail polishes, the colors of the rainbow are lined up straight in a row. It's a, li it's a little funny, actually. I should put a picture of that in email. I'm a perfectionist, but that makes a, that's a good thing to come and trade with me because I want to get it right. And really, I want to get it right for myself. And I've built a business that way for the last 10 years. But if you're not that way, if you're not personality is you're not a perfectionist, then just follow what I'm doing and learn it. If your personality is you know you're impatient, you know, work on that. Work on that part of yourself. I don't, you know, do some meditation or something. I don't know, exercise, like work it out. Work it out in your mind because you're really kind of working against yourself, to be honest with you. Good questions today. Anyways, we're talking about making good choices. How do you make good choices? How do you find quality trades? I use my system to pick the right stock every day, and we've been talking about that. So you have to trade a good system. It tells you what to trade and when. And again, we've been talking about the average risk. One to one, I think, is a reasonable risk. If you're risking 2,000, looking to make 2,000, but if you wanna make 20 grand a month, you're gonna to have to risk at least 1,000 per trade. And again, <laughs> Look at it as a bigger picture. This comes down to a $5,000 a week. So if you make, for example, on that one trade, $3,700, well, you don't have to trade the rest of the week. You do one more trade a week if you want and stop. Now, I don't I don't tend to do that. And again, I'm, act, I'm pretty active. But I mean, really, you have to look at it like it's per week. That's why if you have one day where you take a loss in a trade, it shouldn't be the end of the world. You get up on a Monday, say you lose on a Monday, you have four more days left in the week. There's no reason to go hog wild and then just lose, lose, lose and trade all day and, and then dig yourself into a hole on a Monday. You could take one trade on a Monday, have a loss and still have a fabulous week. You have to look at it as a goal week per week. <coughs> Again, I do not get up in the morning and plan on doing anything but winning. I think of every trade that I do that it's going to work or I wouldn't do it. But you have to know that it may not. And that's why I do use stops in my day trades. So my expectation of myself is that I will succeed. My expectation is that the trade will work. I have conviction it will. But in the back of my mind, I'm aware of the odds. And that is why I do put a stop in when I'm day trading. I don't feel the need to do that with options because the risk is a stop. But it is a personal preference. And it is something that you can do if you feel more comfortable doing that. But no, you will miss out on trades that we did like Navinia, where in fact, you will not make a profit if you killed the trade when it's down 50%. Any other questions here? And again, I have targets in the newsletter. So you can look for the targets. If it doesn't hit, hit the target, I'd say stay with it. If it hits the target, you get out. And these are number targets. So I have a system that is consistently reliable and this helps you with fake outs. We're gonna see a lot of choppiness, I think, going into the end of the year for many reasons, economic reasons, political reasons. The market is rallying today. Will that last, will we make a new high? We're gonna see. Just, this is just the beginning of a very volatile period, I think, in the market. <coughs> but this helps for money if you know how to play the moves. Let me just take a sip of water here, I'm coughing. Anyways, we talked about money management. We did talk about stops with the question. Uh, follow the system. We talked about that. And it's the quality. Again, nothing is 100%. You want as much as you can get as wins. 75, 80% is about where my system hits. So you have to figure if you're taking 10 trades in a row, you have to figure two, two and a half are gonna lose. And so that's why you got to make sure that you follow it and you stops. 
because you can't have one losing trade run all out without a stop and a day trade and run out like crazy. I can't even think though of the last day trade that we did that lost. I've been on a roll with day trades. I don't know the last day of trade we lost. I'm trying to think to show you a losing day trade now, but I can't think of any. But I do use stops with day trades because if we have a stop in, and I'm saying I'm just making this up, for example, say the stop's two bucks. If you don't put the stop in and it runs $6 over, that'd be the equivalent of three losses, which you can't have. So you've got to make sure that you don't lose too much when you're doing a trade, which is why we have the stops in for the day trades. And it's about quality, not quantity. Some days you may get a day off and don't do any trades. That's not gonna be now. That's not gonna be earnings season. We did talk about return on investment. We did talk about return on risk and trading. It's a difference between day trading equities and also doing options. I like doing both. I get the overnight moves and the bigger moves with options. And the day trades, I get the fast, quick trades where I'm in and out sometimes in five minutes. So for me, I like doing both. If you prefer one or the other, the type of account that works for you financially, do it. But again, ultimately, it's the idea of making money. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's why at the beginning I said, are you losing? Is that why you're here? It's got to be tough for people that are losing, that are trading for, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. I know it was tough for me when it took me that three-year period. It was tough. You know, and, and I'm a fighter and I like to get it right. But I mean, there are some people that have been following me for so long and they're trading and losing. I, it's got to take a, its toll on people, not just financially, but mentally and emotionally. I mean, you've got to kind of ask yourself if you really want to be successful and what are you willing to do to get there? I mean, what are you willing to do to get to that point? It's, it's really like anything you want in life, and this could be anything. It could be sports. It could be building a house, it could be getting married, a relationship, having a baby, we're just talking about that. It could be trading any big goal that you have. I mean, you really have to sometimes put it all on the line and say, what am I willing to do to make it happen for myself? And I'm not gonna give up. And even if the odds seem stacked against you, I'm not gonna give up. And if you have that kind of attitude, you are gonna get there. It may not be as fast as you want, but you will. Because I gotta tell you, a lot of people do not have that attitude. Again, we talked about this earlier too. Having the right attitude definitely, definitely, definitely helps. But you won't be successful without the right system no matter what. And I think a lot of people that are trading, and you saw this even today and yesterday in the way the market rallied, they love to buy dips. People bought the dip in the market, and while it worked the last three days, it may not work for the next week. So we are looking at different stocks to trade each and every single solitary day. I look at the market, I see what the market's doing, and I will tell you what I think of the market on any given day, but we don't do the market all the time. We do not. I'm looking at the rating system, I'm looking at specific different picks, and the rating system is a checklist, and this is what you come and learn from me. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock and to read the direction correctly. It's the points. Where is the money flowing? Is it going up? Is it going down? These are all the things that are important that you need. And more importantly, having a mentor. So I'm gonna go over, why did this work? Why did I like it? Why did we do Zillow today? What do I think of the market? Why should you have held NVIDIA? Whatever. I answer questions in the room. Being a mentor and helping teach you people to continue to drill into them the system when they're in the live room, I think really helps people get it. But for me, obviously, I have a lot of conviction in what I do because I created the system in the first place. And I didn't create it for anyone but me. I ended up starting a business really because I was in a trading room. I had been figuring out my system. I was doing my own thing, but I was in a room and then somebody was off or let me take the mic one day and I started talking. And I realized I had a voice and people then liked me in the room. And then I ended up starting a business on a YouTube channel and just kind of took off from there. I didn't really pre-plan pre to start a business when I developed my own system. I did it for me, for myself. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so good. I never anticipated ever teaching anything I figured out and that was not the reason I did this in the first place. But sometimes things happen and take a turn and go in directions you never anticipate. Just like what I'm doing with TV. I've been on TV now for almost five years. And you know, I would love to move that forward faster for myself too. And now it's taking sort of a political turn for me. We'll see where it goes. But sometimes you get down a road and you never know where it's gonna go, but you do things because you love them. And I absolutely love reading charts and I love predicting where something's gonna go before it doesn't. But you know, no one ever said sometimes success is easy. You will have to climb sometimes up a ladder in order to get there. But if you quit, I can guarantee you one thing, you definitely will not make it. And if you think you're gonna make money in every trade, you're totally unrealistic and you shouldn't even be trading. Trading is not for the faint of heart. It's for people that understand that some trades will lose and you're risking money. 
Having a good attitude and understanding what it is will help you. Training is not black and white. You have to live in the gray area. If you live in the gray area, you will do far, far better off. Some people understand this and do well, and some people don't. Any questions? Thanks for letting me stay, Kathy. We're almost done here, but it's a reliability the system. It's sticking with one thing. We talked about this. You have to be deliberate, and you have to have conviction, and you've got to get the proper education. And again, the more you do it, the better you get, just like sports or anything else. But you've got to have a plan of action if you want to make a substantial income per month and per day. And if you're planning on doing this for a living full time, you absolutely have to have a plan. So my class, if you're interested, is called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course teaches you what direction to play the stock. It also teaches you how to play the stock on the live day and take the trades, entries and exits. The class teaches you how to read institutional positioning and stocks. The Golden Gap course teaches you how to day trade gaps. That's what we're going to do. And again, you can do them as options. If you decide to come in the training room this week for the open house, though, we are not doing options. It is not an options room. The options are on the newsletter only. The room is a day trading room. I call the day trades of the room just so you understand the difference if you come. And again, if you come, just watch this week. If you have questions, you can email me tonight. This is something that it moves really fast. The trades set up quick. They go quickly. That's why everybody in the room has to learn how to do it before joining the room. You know, and again, I do use stops in my day trades, but I call the stop in the room. You have to be consistent with your share sizing. Yes, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And the class is this weekend, which is Saturday and Sunday. But if you want to be successful, my advice to you is trade only golden gaps. Don't go off the rails and do other things and incorporate my system with another system that you might have done in the past. Follow it, take the class, learn it, do it to the letter. Get the best entry you can with precision. Try to get a good risk reward. The ones that were looking for bigger targets, I will tell you. NVIDIA, for example, I would have been looking for a bigger target if it had gone right away. It did not. It did not. The trade was down. It, it pulled it out of the wool by the end of the week. But I would have been looking for a bigger target if it had moved faster. You can always ask me. And you have to have a money management plan specifically if you have definite goals of what you're trying to accomplish. Recently, I did that. <coughs> I said to myself, do, do, do. I want this by a certain date. So in my mind, I've had some goals and some things that I've wanted. I'm not, I'm not going to get off the rails here because we're really past time. But I've recently realized, I'm like, okay, I've had this goal for a while. This isn't happening yet. I'm going to have to set a date to it. That's what you have to do. Sometimes that's what you have to do. This doesn't mean being unrealistic. Like you're gonna make 100 grand in a week or something with a small account. It means like looking at time and saying, this is what I want by boom, six months from now or whatever. Like literally, I just said this, I just said this yesterday actually, I just said this to myself yesterday. Like I want this to happen by then. That's it, I'm tired of waiting. And you, then you just create it and you just make it happen. And then you take every step necessary in order to make it happen. You put the positive attitude out there, you visualize it in your mind, and you do the work. It's not a just about visualizing it. You have to do the work too. It's easy to say, well, I want to be a successful trader, and you chat it up with your friends, and you go to free webinars, and you go to free trading room trials. You have to do the work. Part of the work is not just reading books and studying charts every day. Part of the work is going through the process of winning and losing and the hardships that come with it and moving forward if you've had a shitty past. Part of the work is continuing forward, finding someone like me, paying for a class and paying the price of it, even if you paid for classes and lost in them. The work is the emotional work. Don't you understand? It's the difficulty of deciding to move forward and keep going with your dreams and pursuing them, even if you failed in the past. It's the idea of not giving up, okay? Because when you give up, then it's all over. And what is the point? That is depressing. And I'll tell you, more people give up trading than ever, ever continue on. And yet they trade and risk money every day. They really mentally have given up. They don't invest in classes anymore. They don't know what they're doing. They're losing overall. They write it off on their tax returns every year. They've mentally and emotionally checked out and give up, but they still risk money and take trades. That is so crazy. That's so crazy. Think about it. It makes no sense. Either just be black and white with yourself and make up the mind you're not going to give up. 
You are going to keep forging forward and you're going to figure it out. And you're going to get there and you're going to do it. Anyways, my system is calling, again, the golden gap. We've talked about it. It's one strategy. That's all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and fail all the time. You might be trading more years than I'm alive, but you don't know what I know about gaps. That's a reason to come to me. You will learn how to read institutional money and price patterns of gaps, and you don't need to do anything else. Because if your reason for doing this is to make money, this will make you money. That's the important piece. So again, it's called the Golden Gap. It's a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. You will learn the checklist. You will learn the entries, the exits. And the class is this weekend. I'm only doing three more classes before the end of the year. This is a good class if you want to trade earnings season. It's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 9 to 5. Cost of the class is the same for everyone, $6,999. If you sign up this week by Friday, you will get a bonus. Special this week is the Trading Room and Options Newsletter free until Memorial Day 2022. So that is seven months plus on the letter and in the room to get all of the calls. It's a great offer. Those of you already know about the Trading Room trial, you can come to the open house. If you have questions, email me. If you want to sign up for the class email, please do not wait until Friday at the last minute. I go to bed early in general, but I definitely do the night before the class. You cannot sign up on the website. You must email me for the forums. I know some of you have emailed me before and following me for a while. And Serene, you're one of those people. In fact, before we leave, I'm going to look up exactly, exactly how long you've been following me. So we can have a good laugh about it, Sari. Sari asked a question earlier about something. Sari, Sari, Sara. All right, let's find out, Sari. All right, guess, Sari. Somebody guess, Galahad. Guess how long Sari has been following the stock swoosh. Galahad, are you there? <laughs> After the course, what's the price for the training for the year? The training for the year is $39.99 a year or $500 a month. After that. But I do specials for students if you're already a client. Uh, price of the options newsletter. It's only a one-year subscription, not monthly. You do not have to do the class if you want to sign up for the newsletter. It's $6,999 for the year for the newsletter. So that's why this is a good deal. Galahad guessed 2013. No, close. Cherie, you have been following me since April 6, 2015. Now you know. So that is, Cherie, that is, today is October 2021. So that is just shy of seven years. And Suri, you haven't, I don't know what to say, Suri. It's so funny. I was talking about babies. I was on the phone with somebody the other day. I don't even know what this was about. Some, something that came up. And then the person said, I <laughs> said I didn't have any kids or something. or I don't even know what we were talking about. And the person said, well, the stock swish is your baby. And I said, well, that's true. <laughs> it's true. The stock swish is my baby. But I haven't got given up on getting married and having babies either. <laughs> Listen, any questions from anyone about anything? Good questions today. No idea what we we'll do tomorrow. Ron said, thank you, nicely done. You're welcome. Kathy probably is feeding her cat. <laughs> thank you for letting me stay late. I think this was good. If you have questions, email me. If you want to sign up for the class, email me. If you want to be in the trading room this week, email me. Thank you, Kathy. Listen, I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to zip it. Mm -hmm so that I can talk tomorrow in the room and on TV the rest of the week. Uh, TD, email me and I can send that to you. It's Melissa at the stop, swoosh.com. Room opens at 8.30, but I don't start talking until after nine. Have a great night. 
Stay safe, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon.